our Father and our God, we thank you and we give you praise this afternoon for a privilege to be before you. Father, we enthrone you. Lord, over this lunch hour, we enthrone you. Lord, in our lives, we enthrone you. Lord, even in the atmosphere, we enthrone you, Lord. In every mind, we declare you are king. In every situation, we declare you are king. In every family, we declare you are king. In this city of Kampala, we declare you are king. In Uganda, we enthrone you. You are Lord. And so, Lord, this afternoon, we surrender our lives to you. We surrender this ground, Father, totally into your hand. And every power, every situation, every altar that stands against God's purpose, as we gather in your name, we declare them defunct. We render them powerless. Every voice of error, we silence them. Every oh God, wickedness whatsoever, we command them to give way. And so God, we ask in the name of Jesus that you speak to us. We ask that you quicken our minds, that as your word comes forth, grant that, Lord, we will not be just hearers, but doers of your word. And so, God, we surrender every detail right now into your hand. So take all the glory, take all the honor, and take all the worship. In Jesus' mighty name, Father, we pray and believe. Amen. Amen. Friends, you are most welcome. Both those that are in and those that are in li on, online, we welcome you to this lunch hour. And I want to believe the master has something for you in store. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I am by name Emmanuel Oguti. And the most important thing that I want to say is that the Lord saved me. I don't know about you, but if you have not gotten this, I would actually really invite you. This thing is very good. Amen. It is good to be a child of God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Our theme, the theme that I was given is like, reads this, is from Isaiah 8. Verse 13b. And we are talking about that. The theme says, let God be your fear. Let God be your fear. Be the fear of your life. Let God be your fear. And friends, without even beating about the bush, the Bible tells us that the fear of God is the hate of sin. So if God is going to be your fear, then you need to hate sin. Period. There is no in between. There's nothing to hide from that. Let me just read this in the book of Isaiah 8, verse 13. The very part that was, I was given, it says, Let him be your fear, and let him be your dread. But it begins like this. The Lord of hosts, him you shall hallow. Let him be your fear. 
and let him be your trade. Now, when we go to the book of Proverbs 9, it tells us something. In the book of Proverbs chapter 9, verse 10 says, The fear of the Lord is hate of evil. I mean 8, I rather, 813. Sorry. 813. It says the fear of God is hate for evil. So in other words, if anybody is to fear God, that person must hate evil. If the family is to fear God, that family must hate evil. If a nation is to be called a nation that fear God, that nation must fear evil. Hallelujah. 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 Quickly, before I even go other, in, I mean, another way. Also in the book of Proverbs, I mean, the book of Job, chapter 1, verse 8. There's something I want to refer to as this topic is concerned. Eh? Let's go there and we see. Because we need, we need to know these things. Because we are not going to beat about the bush. Because it's not going to help us. Job chapter 1 verse 8 says this. I can read to verse maybe 8, 9 or 10. It says, The Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? That there is none like him on the earth. Blameless, upright man, one who fears God and the shuns the evil. Now, this was before God. Satan was speaking and was telling. I mean, God was speaking and was telling Satan. And he referred to Job as a man who fears him. But one of the things he brings it here, he says he hates, he shuns evil. So friends, if we are not shunning evil, if we are not refusing evil, we cannot claim to be people who fear God. It does not matter who you are. Sometimes we want to call ourselves servants of God, and yet evil is another sweet bread that we have. You are planning evil. You are cooking ego. You are speaking evil things. The Bible tells us those who fear the Lord must shun evil. Even as a church, we must shun evil. You are a mother, you must shun evil. You are a young girl, you ought to shun evil. A young man there, you are supposed to shun evil. It sometimes bothers me when we talk, we call ourselves children of God and we do not. We are in bed with the evil. Talk about the marriage, in bed with the evil. Talk about the young people, in bed with the evil. Talk about the employees. Talk about our parliamentaries. Talk about even our own heads of states. Talk about it. Evil. We are planning evil. 
And that tells us we are not. We are in God at all. So David, God was speaking to him and he told him something here. Before I go back there, he said, did you consider my servant? Verse 9, what did Satan say? He says, so Satan answered the Lord and said, hmm, does Job fear God for nothing? Now, this, 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 this tells us something. When you hear something like that, Satan knows. He says, does Job fear God for nothing? And then he goes ahead to say, have you not made a hedge around him? Hallelujah. Around his household. And around all that he has on every side, you have blessed the work of his hand. And his possessions have increased in the land. But before even we go there, try to explain certain things about Friends, it is important for us to recognize where we are falling. Or oh, if this has been our thing, it is denying us blessings. Going in bed with the evil denies us blessings of God, denies us protections of, from God, denies us increase. We lose even the things that God has ordained to do for us. And even sometimes the one that he has already given, the enemy can easily take it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Friends, as we share, I want us to really be real, I mean realistic and sincere with our lives. Because... God wants for us good. God has never desired anything that is bad for me and you. So God tells him, mm -hmm. it is because you have done all these things. That's why Job fears you. Quickly, friends, why should we fear God? One, we ought to fear God because he is a holy God. Amen. He is holy. The Bible tells us in the book of First Peter, eh? chapter 1, verse 15, be holy because I am holy. God expects us to walk a holy life. We need to fear him because he's holy. In all circumstances, in all places, he's a holy God. That's one reason. He is the creator of heaven and earth. Where we are, it is about him. You are alive, name it. He is supposed to be feared. He is the Lord God. He has the power over everything. That is him. And we cannot deny him that. He has all the wisdom that we can think about it. He is the one. So we need to fear God. He has the blessing that you want. When I was growing up, we sang this song. It reads, I mean, it goes like this. Humble yourself before your mother that you may be Fit for service, be repentant for your master that you may be. Fit for service, humble yourself, humble yourself, 
humble yourself, humble yourself, humble yourself before your master that you may be fit for serve. Be repented before your master that you may be fit for serve. Even blessing that you want, humble yourself, humble yourself. Even marriage that you want, humble yourself, humble yourself. Even children that you want, humble yourself, humble yourself. Even promotion that you want, humble yourself, humble yourself. Humble yourself before your master that you may be fit for service. Humble yourself before your master that you may be fit for service. Even blessing that you want. Humble yourself. Oh, humble yourself. You are so humble yourself. Even children that want humble yourself, yourself, even deliverance that you want humble yourself, yourself, even victory that you want humble yourself, humble yourself. Friends, there is no way between. There is no way between if we are children of God, then we must fear him. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is most powerful. So we need to fear him. He owned the earth and all the heavens and all therein. We need to fear him. He is the creator he has your time and every single thing about you in his hands. He has this nation in his, even this cathedral here. He has the time and the season that we are in. God has it in his, in his hands. Those children that are giving you, if you are a parent, and they are giving you any time, he has them in his, in his hands. I am just giving a testimony of a mother who was actually really distorted by a young man. And he had ran away. And he came here. And we told, I mean, said, ah, there is a God who knows where this young man is. For you, you right now, you don't know. And there is nothing you can do. I remember we went in that chapel there. And we called on God. And we asked God to bring that young man wherever he is. We prayed that very night. By morning, the boy was back home. That is the God that we serve. Eh? We summon them because God has power over their heart. That husband that is giving you less, I mean, I mean sleepless night. God can deal with them. That wife that is saying, uh -uh, I am my own. God can deal with it. That, that boss that is also giving you hard time. God is able to do what you cannot actually do. So we can actually trust in God. Hallelujah. The business that is giving you hard time, man, God is able to stabilize it. That is our God. He is not lacking in the power. He is in all in the all. Friends, when we read this word, God is in all in the all. It means in anything you bring him in, he can handle. When we say God is almighty, every situation around us, God can handle. Even Ebola, God can handle. Didn't he handle COVID? Where is now COVID? Hallelujah. Friends, let's, let's really get serious with our God. He handled that one also. 
So he can handle, if he can handle all those other things, even that which is right now before you, God can handle. Hallelujah. 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 Now, I want us to go to stretch something here. There are benefits. You know, God is not calling us to, to fear him for nothing. I know in Buganda here, I mean, I mean not only Buganda, but today, the generation, they say, Funrawa. Hallelujah. <laughs> Where do you, what do you get from that? Eh? And, and, and that is why we need to know that this thing, God is not calling us to fear him eh? for nothing. There are a lot of benefits. Hallelujah. There are a lot of benefits. In the book of Proverbs 9, 10, he says, the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Amen. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. So now if you refuse to fear God, what are you missing? You have denied wisdom. And so you will make yourself error a lot. So the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. It repeats it in the book of Psalms 111 verse 10. It also says so. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. So anybody who does not fear God, do you think they have wisdom? Are you being challenged? Are our brothers and sisters and children being challenged? I have a testimony again that was actually really made. Family decided to start actually teaching the children, giving them, reading actually the book of Proverbs. These children were struggling in school. They were struggling in school. Now, when they began to teach them to read, let me tell you, they excelled in their studies. And now people began to ask what is happening. And then they told it, this pastor said, no, I gave them to read the book of Proverbs. And that is where the Lord just opened their minds. Because it is wisdom. I was told that even actually the sons of the born women actually had to, one, one parent was struggling with his child and brought after this man's children has excelled seriously and he began to ask, how did you do it? And he had to introduce him to the Bible thing. And he read the Bible. He read the Bible. The boy that was struggling, the boy became wise and excelled. Now, because he was from the sons of the born women. Now he went and gave them the, the, the clue. And then what well, the next thing, they invited this man to go and share with them in their shrine, if I can call it. And then they gave their life to the Lord. Friends, this thing is true. If we fear God, we will walk in wisdom. Hallelujah. 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 Now, in the, book of, in the book of Job that we read, we also saw that God put a hedge of protection because Job feared who? Have you ever heard people praying, now God I am going, and sometimes I tell ourselves, friends, let's be serious. Eh? You tell yourself, now God, put an angel of fire around me. Put, yes, send your angels around me. No, he does it for those who fear him. There's no question about it. So if you fear God, you will have protection. Even when the enemy has done whatever, God will protect you. There are many testimonies about it. So in this job, he said, God put a hedge around him. And then also, God surrounded his family. His household was protected. 
Now, they made that means the devil realized this man was protected. Even his blessing was protected. Why? Because he feared God. So, friends, we better get serious and we begin to fear God. Because it is free of charge, friends. Hallelujah. You get protection when you fear God also. Eh? You get blessing of increase. And you do what? You fear God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory to God. The next thing we see here, when we fear God, we get blessed. In the book of Deuteronomy 28, from verse 1 to, I mean to, to 14, when you read, all those blessings were supposed to come upon anyone who chooses to fear God. It's not limited. Don't say that it is only for the men of God or women of God. No. Everyone who chooses. Not for the pastors or the reverend. No. It is for all. And the one that I want to pick again, God will fight your battles. In Deuteronomy 28 verse 7, the Bible says that the enemies... Your enemies will come before you from one direction, but God will scatter them in seven directions. Who will have fought those battles? God. Because if we fear him, then it takes responsibility to fight those battles. Do we have those battles in life? Are you struggling in any area? Friends, the answer is here. Yeah. God is able to fight that battle. And maybe before we go, we will pray and ask God to glorify himself. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The Bible tells us that God will fight those enemies. The Bible tells us that if we hearken to his voice, he will guide us. Eh? In the book of Psalms 32, 8, that is what the word of God says. He will guide us. So whenever you are walking, you will not be actually treading your, your feet on the wrong path. You will not be making decisions, I mean, haphazardly. No, God will guide you. Even when you are speaking, God will give you what to speak. Because you have chosen to fear him. So God, we are the ones that are missing a lot. In the Acts of Apostles chapter 9, verse 31 to 32, we read, if you can open it and read, hmm, we see what happened. Acts of Apostles chapter 9, Nine thirty one to thirty three. If you are there, read. Oh, if I get let me read it. It says, Then the church throughout Judea, Galilee, and Samaria had peace and were edified and walking in the fear of the Lord. And in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, they were multiplied. Now, friends, the fear of God will enable us to have peace. I hear sometimes we say, we want peace. Hallelujah. You can actually have trouble, but still you have peace. Because the fear of God will actually, God will give you peace. Because God is able, and that is what we need. Peace of mind, peace in relations, peace in that business, peace in the parenting, peace in the leadership, 
peace in Uganda. We need peace. But the Bible also tells us that to the wicked there shall be no peace. So if we want to have a peace, we must fear God. Sometimes I actually I tell ourselves, let's not let's, let's stop being fanatics or funny people. We are crying for peace and we are indulge ourselves in wickedness. You know very well. We cannot. If we want peace, then let us fear God. These men in the act of apostles, they walked in the fear of God, friends. Even parenting. Even in that marriage. Even in that business, if you want to have peace, now like in this economic situation that we are in, we need to have the fear if we are to have peace. Those politicians are not going to give us peace. So I hear some people telling us that they have given us peace. Which peace? Which peace have they given unto us? Hallelujah. Nobody. God is the prince of peace. He is the one that can give us peace. Hallelujah. So we, we must actually surrender. We walk to God. I mean, we walk in the fear of God. If we want to have peace. So these men walked in the fear of God and they had peace. Then God actually edified them. They were blessed. I would read the word and the word would bless them and they would burst in the presence of the Lord. And then we also see that the number kept on multiplying. They increased. Friends, even in us as a church, we need this thing. If we walk in the fear of God, the word of God will be serious, will actually penetrate. You speak the word of God and things will happen. Now, people who have the fear of God in them, they carry the glory of God. Hallelujah. Peter, the same Peter in this text, he was just there and the man who was, I mean, bedridden was there and Peter spoke him out of the bed. You wonder why today eh, we are moving from church to churches looking for miracles. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Go to so and so that is where miracles is. Friend, I want to tell you no. It's not like that. God is everywhere. But we must fear him if we want him to reign in our lives, reign in our ministry, minister to you. That is what we need. Huh? Everywhere if we open and we yield, we shun, we shun evil, we will see the power of God. We have seen it here in Uganda, 1935. The revival. Where, what happened? These guys decided to shun evil. When you hear people talking about walking in the light, what was it about? It was about saying no to evil. And they meant it. When they did that, the Holy Spirit fell upon them. And things began to happen. Are we serving the same God? If he's the same God, it is possible to happen in our time. Hallelujah. It is possible to happen in your house where you are. Eh? It is I mean, possible. When we pray, God will break yokes. It is possible to bring restoration where there has been confusion. It is possible, friends. But if we are just careless, we don't fear God, our prayers will be useless. And I don't want to pray useless prayers. Somebody with me? <laughs> Somebody with me? I don't want. Even when you are in this situation and you know God is with you, yes, you will, he will see you through. Hallelujah. So we see this man walked here. And then 
we find it that in, in this passage says, now it came to pass as Peter went through all the parts of the country that he also came down to the saints who dwelt in Lydia. There he found a certain man named Enos, who had been bedridden eight years and was paralyzed. And Peter said to him, Enos, Jesus the Christ heals you. Rise and make your bed. Then he rose. Immediately. What did that? The power that was upon this man's life. When he spoke, he spoke and God confirmed it. He was a man who feared God. Hallelujah. For when these things are real, if we fear God, we will see the manifestation of God's power. Hallelujah. And then in, verse, in the book of Psalms again, Psalms 34, verse. I, the time is not our best ally, but I want to, I mean, quickly read through this thing. Psalms 34, verse 17, he says, he will deliver the righteous eh? of those who fear him from all their troubles. He will deliver. He will deliver them. The Lord hears their cry. He hears them. The Lord says to the, the, those who fear God, when they call, God will hear them. So if you want to be heard, fear the Lord. Walk in his fear. Hallelujah. He says in verse, in verse, in, in verse that, I mean, Psalms, again, Psalms 34, verse 9. He says, Fear the Lord, you is saint. There is no want for those who fear him. Those who fear God, they will not have wants because God will meet them. Hallelujah. God will meet those wants. So if we fear God, we are doing ourselves good. Eh? God will fight our battles. I've said that one. God will give us the spirit of repentance. And he will also release us to give. Hallelujah. Because we shall now know all that we have belongs to God. So we will give. We will not struggle. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Friends, the time is not my best, uh, our best ally, and I just want us to rise up and we pray. Hallelujah. <laughs> Can you just take time and tell God to have mercy upon you in any area? You know yourself, you know the family, you know what is happening. Just come before God and ask him to forgive you so that we can pray. And you, when you begin to pray, God will respond. Our Father and our God, we bless you, we give you honor because you are God of truth, God of power, God of all. We come this afternoon in repentance. God, where we have rebelled, where we have walked in any form of rebellion, whether in our hearts, whether in our mind, whether in our action, whether in the words that we have done, God, we repent as even leaders, as parents, as young people, as politicians, as businessmen, God, where we have cheated, we cry to you, Lord our God, for mercy. We repent, oh God, where we have rebelled against your word, against your prophet, against your praise. Lord, we are saying we are sorry. Even where we have risen up, God, against your own truth, and we have tried to challenge, Lord, have mercy. God, where we have King of glory, Lord, slumbered, even in the reading of your word, we repent and we ask of you to have mercy upon us. Where your spirit has convicted us of sin and we have not responded, we cry unto you, Lord, for mercy. Father, we are sorry for everything around us that does not give glory. We are saying we are sorry. God, where have we clothed ourselves with the worldliness? 
Lord, we are sorry. God, where we have King of glory, rebel against your own truth. We ask this day that you remember mass upon us. Remember mass upon us as elders, as children, as brothers, as our God women, as men. We are sorry as your servants, Lord, where we have not walked in accordance to your calling. We repent and we ask of you for mercy as ministers of God. We are sorry for everything that we have done that are not worthy. We humble ourselves today before you and we ask of you, Lord, now to release upon us. Pray for yourself and ask the Lord to enable you walk in his fear. Let's just pray that the Lord will help you. That from now on, you will walk in the fear of God. Friend, when you walk in the fear of God, you will run away from sin. You will now be able to discern sin and you run away. You will not be in a trap of sin. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ that this word that we have read help us so God be Father, do us because your word says that you desire we should not be hearers but doers of your word and so Lord we pray and I pray for each one of us that Lord you will help us God be a God men and women a people, a generation a church and a nation that fears you, leaders that fears you, children that fears you, young people that fears you, businessmen that fears you, elders that fear you. Lord, we pray that you help us. Help us. Lord, we need your deliverance. Your word has told us that those who walk rightly, who fear you, whatever trouble that they may be God you said you will deliver them and now as we stand here Lord each one of us our families that have troubles businesses that are troubles that are in, in trouble leadership that is in trouble marriages that are in trouble Father we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, that from here, let your hand of deliverance touch. Let your hand break those yokes. Let your hand overthrow. Let your power, Father, heal. Let your power break the yoke of the curses. Let your power overthrow whatever mountain that has been on their way. God, it is written in your word that you put a hedge of fire, a hedge around your man's servant. Lord, it is our cry that you will establish a wall of protection around each one of us, around the children of your servants and your submaiden servant, around those businesses, around them, that you will put protection Father, I pray that they will know God's own increase. As we have seen in the word, we pray that those of God of us who has issues, God, like you delivered that man who was bedridden, there are many of oh God who are not feeling well. Lord, we ask in the name of Jesus Christ that let your hand of healing Whoever is listening, whoever has, oh God, anyone under attack of infirmity, we rebuke it now. We declare, let your hand of healing be manifested in their life, be manifested in their relation, be manifested in the business, be manifested, Lord, in their leadership, be manifested in their career. Because you are God who delivers. We adore you, Jesus. We exalt you, King. And now, Lord, you who blesses your people, 
Father, may you do so. Let your hand of blessing, Lord, be manifested in every area of this. Your children and the families and the people that have come and those that, Lord God, on the on, online, let them also receive their portion in the name of Jesus Christ. We give you thanks. We give you honor. Now, God, I ask that you answer swiftly in the name of Jesus for the glorification of your holy name. In Jesus' name, we pray and believe. Amen. Amen.